Uh, Jeremy Denk, who is our music director, is on a real roll, to put it mildly. In case you didn't know, he was awarded a MacArthur Fellowship grant in September. He was named just this last week as Instrumentalist of the Year by Musical America. This past summer, he was given a book contract by Random House to expand the article he wrote in The New Yorker last spring on his teachers uh, into book form. He is currently artist in residence at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. And all of this while well, he continues to have a very active performing career as a pianist and as a chamber musician. He's currently in San Francisco, performing with the San Francisco Symphony, some uh, Mozart concerto, and travels with them to Carnegie Hall next Wednesday, um, on top of everything else. And of course, as music director, we've added a new role for Jeremy, something he's never done, and that is he's become a librettist. We all know he's a great writer, um, but writing a libretto for an opera that he has dreamed up is a completely new thing, and that's one of the beauties of Ojai. We provide a laboratory and a blank slate for artists to reinvent themselves. At one of our first planning meetings, Jeremy said that he had a very, very mad idea for an opera uh, based on perhaps the most unlikely text that you can imagine which is Charles Rosen's 1972 scholarly book called The Classical Style. Now this book is a vivid description of the birth, the characteristics, and the death of the classical style in music. Basically, music that is defined by Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven. And turning this into an opera, I have to say was not the most obvious idea but I trusted Jeremy's imagination and creativity and his writing. So I said, absolutely, we'll do it. And we secured Stephen Stuckey, noted American composers, uh, who by the way spent, I think, 15 years as head of contemporary music activities with the Los Angeles Philharmonic, so he knows this area, to write the music for this opera. Now this is a big project, we're not talking the Ring, we're talking about a, about an hour-long chamber opera. It'll feature eight singers, all singing multiple roles. The roles are Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, Donna Anna, Don Giovanni, and the Commendatore from Don Giovanni, Charles Rosen himself, a preening musicologist named Henry Snibblesworth, and then the tonic, the dominant, and the subdominant, basic chords of the classical style. There's a role for something called the Tristan chord. There's a bartender. And finally, there's a role for Robert Schumann. Um, it's hysterically funny. It's very fast-paced and really clever. Jeremy has been able to turn this book into a dramatic story. If you know music, you'll be wildly amused. If you don't know music, you'll be wildly amused. <laughs> he basically has found a way to explain dramatically the essence of harmony and sonata form. Listen to two little excerpts from his synopsis. Scene three, it's in seven scenes. The dominant is in a bar feeling unresolved. The tonic appears with an excess of certainty. The bartender comments wryly on this codependent relationship. The subdominant appears healing all wounds. Mozart happens on the scene looking for Charles Rosen, but finds himself attracted to the subdominant. <laughs> scene six, we come upon the tonic, the dominant, the subdominant again trapped in their ongoing love triangle. A mysterious eye patch visitor, the Tristan Chord, warns them darkly of future developments. Chastened, the tonic, the dominant, and the subdominant decide to enjoy their system of meaning while it lasts. The opera ends as Charles 
Rosen and Robert Schumann are left on stage sitting at the piano, playing plaintive fragments of his fantasy, quotations of Beethoven with the harmonic polarity blurred, reimagined the disillusion of the classical style never to return. <laughs> 